I definitely lost some friends. Some of my friends decided to put distance for myself um, because my lifestyle was different now in terms of just my, my leisure activities and things I did, places I went, some of that distance I put. Um, eventually what I learned is that the people that were most important to me and the truest of friends, it, it didn't matter. They were going to be there no matter what, which has been my experience. The, my truest friends are still my friends today. Um, and then the other people that um, were really negative um, and had kind of those really aggressive kind of abrasive responses, they aren't people that I, I need in my life right now anyway. You know, those aren't, uh, if you're not going to love me in my, as I am no matter what, then you don't need to be a part of my life. Um, people I didn't know but I, in the community that I lived in at the time, um, I remember feeling like everybody was looking at me. Like I remember feeling, oh, you know, people were staring, but that was probably just my own insecurity at the time. Although I certainly did experience some discrimination within the community. But overall, my experience has been quite positive. Um, certainly the Muslim community opened their arms to me and were incredibly supportive. And I felt so much love and such a sense of community and respect there, uh, which was extremely helpful early on. Um, having that community connection, I think, was was major. It was, it was very key in terms of my, my feeling so strong and willing to continue when things were difficult. Um, but otherwise, yeah, it's been okay. Yeah, I mean, I think I was so ignorant towards Islam before I became Muslim. I, as I said, I really didn't know, um, I really didn't know anything. And I think afterwards, um, it wasn't that my mind necessarily changed. I think I was just, I was so much more educated and I had, I had such a, uh, I mean, such a positive experience. And uh, I think seeing the diversity in the community as well was really significant. I think there's always this idea that Muslims are just Arabs, which is absolutely not the case. It was such a, um, a welcomed opportunity to be a part of such a diverse community, people from all over the world, people with such diverse backgrounds. Um, so that was pretty significant. Um, other, I mean, opposed from that, I don't think I had a lot of other predisposed ideas or notions about it. Um, yeah. I mean, I think the most significant things for me when I became Muslim, or just uh, what I love the most about Islam right now is, uh, as I mentioned, I think that, I just think it's such a, it balances the faith and the, the spiritual and the, uh, the intellectual. Uh, it's, it's a perfect balance. There's proof in it and the fact that the Quran has been preserved and you know that really what we're asked for um, and asked of to do, it just makes such perfect sense to me. I just, um, I think that, um, that it, it's timeless. I think that the examples that we find in the Quran and from the Prophet Muhammad, like I think, peace be upon him, uh, I think they're examples for everybody in all situations. Um, and I think that that is what makes it a, like a religion for all and inclusive of everybody. I also love um, the idea of community that's within Islam. Um, there's five pillars within Islam, um, and I, each of the pillars, you know, the statement of faith, we say that publicly around community. We pray as a community facing the same direction at the same time, uh, often, often in congregation with one another. We all fast the same month of Ramadan. Again, it's a community action. We give charity as the cat. Um, we have to do that to support our community, to take care of the people in need. Um, and then if we go to Hajj, again, this is Muslims all going to the same place, doing the same pilgrimage together. Community is such an integral part of this religion. And we're all in the same playing field. Um, that was That's enormous to me in terms of uh, there's no racism, uh, there's no um, tribalism, there's no, there's no sense of somebody being better because of money or education or status, we're, we're all the same and I think that when that's understood and um, it, it's just something so beautiful and it really just shows how this is a religion for everybody and, and how we need to connect with one another and we need to serve one another and, and worship with one another which I think is, is really what we need to do as humanity um, for the sake of, for the sake of the preservation of the earth and preser preservation of mankind and 
um, just be good and, and take care of one another and I think that Islam really encompasses that um, and that's that's like the beauty and the truth of Islam that I wish was uh, which was I wish I was on the media more. I wish that was the message that was being shared all the time instead of the negativity. I think the biggest struggle that Muslims are facing and that Islam is facing right now um, clearly is that so much of what is being shown about Islam, it's not our narrative. I think that the world is really quick to, to talk about Islam um, and often it's not the Muslims that are being interviewed or that are speaking up. And I think that we as a Muslim community, we need to be more active. Um, but I also think that the media has a responsibility to talk to Muslims as well and to tell the good stories and to, uh, to go into the communities and see the work that's going on. I also think that because there's so much negativity when it comes to Islam, um, that and we live in such a global uh, environment these days I think it poses a new struggle particularly for Muslims in general but particularly our youth in terms of um, internalized Islamophobia and uh, Muslim identity um, how can I be Muslim um, as well as you know live a live a life in today's society um, what does that look like how uh, how can I still have pride in my religion and still practice my religion um, without being uh, or having fear of judgment or assuming that people will think a certain thing of me or um, opp will oppress me or close doors towards me or have judgments upon me. I think that's a, that's a struggle right now for our community. I think we really need to work hard to find our voices and to go back and to look at the struggles from the people of our past. Um, as I said, the Quran is timeless and I think that there's true um, there's true knowledge and, and wisdom to be taken from those stories and to apply to today's society and if we can do that and we can find our voices and if we can just um, and not hide from who we are it's okay that we're Muslim right uh, so just tell our own stories I think that will um, I think that's that's really important for our community right now I mean I've been Muslim in the West and I've been Muslim here in Turkey uh, there's definitely different experiences and different struggles. I mean, certainly within Canada. Canada is a pretty welcoming uh, country. It's pretty diverse. We lived in Toronto. It's an extremely diverse city. Um, the mosques are very, very active. Uh, there's a lot of learning to be had, lots of conferences. Um, the mosques are the center of the community. Uh, people are going there for, for activities and sports and community engagement and, and because it's necessary to keep your Muslim identity. The, the mosque is the hub of the Muslim identity. They're, they're really precious things and, and uh, it feels very much alive. And you really understand your community and um, how important that is. Uh, when we came here, uh, because everybody's grown up Muslim and Muslim is part of the culture, or Islam is part of the, the culture, uh, Islam is experienced and it's lived, but in a very different way. And um, I know for myself and also with my children, I feel like I have to work really hard to make sure that there's a consciousness about Islam here and that we don't take it for granted. Um, the, there isn't the activity in the, in the mosques like there is in Canada um, in order to, for myself particularly because I speak English predominantly, to seek knowledge and to be in community with others, that, that's a bigger challenge. Women here, they don't have as much of a presence in the mosques um, or in just uh, even children. I'm struggling to have my children really excited about it. I So it takes, I, I feel like it takes more of an effort um, to raise them in a way where they're, they're conscious of the choices that we make, conscious of the way that we live, uh, knowing why we do it. Um, I would say that those are the two the major differences. There's positive and negatives of both. Um, the fact that we're here, that, I mean, that was a choice. We wanted to raise our children in a, in a Muslim country and we value that very much. That being said, I really do hope that one day my children will experience um, an excitement and a love for the mosque that they did when we were in Canada. I think 
the best way to tell others about Islam is to make sure you know, you know the religion yourself. I mean, I think that we are responsible as Muslims to to educate ourselves and to pra practice um, and adhere to the commandments of the Quran and of Allah. Um, and I think that if we do that, that's the best example. Um, I think, you know, we know the Prophet Muhammad was the best example for mankind. And the way that we know he won the hearts of the people is because he was trusted, he was kind, he was generous, um, he was forgiving, he was merciful. And at the same time, he adhered to his values. He didn't, he didn't change them for others. He, and he was always, uh, he was always on the, the middle ground, you know, whatever was easy for the people. And I think that if we understand our religion and if we practice it um, unapologetically in terms of, again, I, this is my faith and I'm going to adhere to it. At the same time, I can still be a part of your community and I can still love you and I can still um, welcome you and, and support, we can support one another and we can have respectful dialogue. and. Um, and I think that as long as we do that and we follow his example, I think that's going to be the best example for, for others as well. Because they'll, it's undeniable. It's, they'll, they'll see the truth. They'll see the beauty. Um, because that's what true Islam is. It's, it's this sense of community and respect and kindness and charity um, and welcoming dialogue and, um, and bettering ourselves. And I think that that's what we need to really focus on. Very, very beautiful message. I mean, when the story is yours, you don't, um, you don't mess it up. It just easily flows, and you communicate to a certain level that you draw in people that are listening to you with no struggles. This was very, very beautiful. My battery is low, but I would love to talk about the fact of community. I've always admired how um, people come together in this religion and do what they do together. It's not one person on their own, that person on their own, no. Everything is done together, they appreciate one another, they encourage one another, and they're there for one another. That's how the world should be. We should all take uh, a look at this and actually strive to be like the Muslims. Otherwise, this was very, very interesting. Let me know what you think. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in my next reaction video.